Hi, Dr. Versalati here talking about um, designing classroom rubrics for grading. Um, I wanted to clarify uh, a little bit about this because um, Brown talks about rubric in the chapter called um, Alternatives in Assessment. And for this course, rubrics for performance-based assessments are not alternative. They're, they're mainstream now. I think this is Brown showing its age a bit. Um, I think we have seen, um, we've been using rubrics for a while and we see the value of performance-based assessments. Granted, they're not traditional paper and pencil tests in that way, but they're, they're certainly no longer alternative. Okay, going to what Brown talked about with rubrics. Uh, this quote is from uh, page 128 and I want to kind of unpack it bit by bit. So let's look at this. Um, rubrics uh, are is a device for to uh, use to evaluate open-ended oral and written responses. Now um, we need to, I, I feel like I want to stress this because I have seen some students in the past say that they are going to grade everything with a rubric um, and I think that that maybe is a, a con confusing the idea of grading criteria with rubric. So for instance, if there are clear, correct, and incorrect answers, for instance, like a short answer, when was the Declaration of Independence signed, and you want to answer in a complete sentence, because there, it's clear whether or not that's correct or incorrect, you, you, you don't need a rubric to do that. And again, we can think like m most things, right, is a continuum with, you know, an impromptu speech as a open-ended um, response, very much open-ended, everyone can talk uh, about a different s topic versus multiple choice on the other, but just keep in mind that we we don't need to grade everything with a rubric. Now, um, grading criteria I'm completely for. Um, for instance, I, I think you should always have an answer key before you give it to the students and assign points for the expected answers so that if um, and even expected partial answers or expected partially correct answers so that if the same half answer is given by five students, you want to give the same amount of partial points for that. So the, the points per question, if you give partial credit, it's consistent. Um, and also, I think you should, uh, it gives you a chance to edit, revise, delete. And I think you should take your test before you give it to the students. Um, I know that's hard because you created it and you know the answers, but it's another opportunity to try to gauge how long it will take. Um, and with practice and being an intentional, you can kind of figure out, oh, I need to times this by four for my students or something like that by measuring when the first student finishes. Um, you, you certainly want there to be time for the students that tend to take longer. Um, okay, back to the quote. So um, Brown also says that rubrics have a set of criteria or competencies. And um, these categories in our rubrics should come directly from the learning objectives. If, if for instance, if use of vocabulary is um, appropriate vocabulary use is a learning objectives, right? You, we want our students to learn vocabulary that we teach them. If that's somehow in a well-written learning objective, that should probably show up somewhere in your rubric as well, right? Um, and so the, these categories come from the learning objectives, and usually we're not going to want a lot of these categories in our rubrics, maybe somewhere between four and six, because um, this is a guideline. Uh, there might be good rubrics that are, have seven or even eight categories, maybe. Um, but if it gets too many, 10, 12, it becomes really hard to assess on all of those different categories. It becomes just too much for the rater. And likewise, if you only have one or two categories, maybe you don't really need a rubric. You have to think about that. Okay, and uh, again, each of these uh, criteria and competencies based on the learning objectives in a rubric, since it's an open-ended performance with variation, we want to um, somehow differentiate the quality of a performance. 
And we do that by uh, describing the levels of expectation, uh, uh, different levels of expectation. What is, what is, what do we expect at these different levels? Now, Brown also says that this could include scaling, where we um, have uh, corresponding numbers for that, but it doesn't have to be, right? You can, you can just say um, developing skill. You don't have to put numbers on it for it to be a rubric. Okay, so let's look at some examples to talk through these ideas a little bit. I'm going to go to the uh, Blackboard site. So here we are. Um, I'm going to um, scroll down to examples of assessment. And let's start with this writing rubric example. So here we have a uh, the Pennsylvania Writing Assessment from several years ago. And we have one, two, three, four, five categories. So that fits within the guidelines. And we, we see that the word convention is just defined here, uh, style, organization, these are all um, dis defined. Um, and we see that we have four levels of quality. Um, so, and, and the way this format is set up, we have one at the bottom, and we see that this is increasing as we go up. So let's look at um, conventions here. So the, the, the one score has minimal control of grammar, mechanics, spelling, usage, and sentence formation. Two has limited control three has sufficient control, and four has evident control of grammar, mechanics, spelling, usage, and sentence formation. Now, how does that sound to you? Now, this is a good start, um, and but I, I think we have to be a little bit careful here because what is limited to me might be minimal to you and sufficient to someone else. So uh, sometimes we, um, we have to be careful of evaluative terms here. Um, the, we see a similar thing with style, with minimal variety, limited word choice, generic use of a variety of words. I, I think that this is a little bit better than this one. Um, the other interesting thing is, although it would be clearer if we gave numbers here in conventions, uh, rubrics really aren't used to measure quantities. If, if it's a quantity, you could just give points based on the quantity. This is really about quality. So um, before we move, we're going to look at some other examples, but before we move on, I wanted to give some um, a little bit of a note here. Um, sometimes, so if this were our only rubric up here, uh, we might not know how to grade something that's completely illegible or um, incoherent or something like that. So we have a non-scorable um, option here, a little, um, you might want to think about that because sometimes students just don't do something and if this, or they only put their name on it or they scribble, you have to give one if that's the bottom line. Okay, let's look at another example. And this time, let's just do maybe the oral presentation rubric example. So again, we have criteria, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, a little bit higher, but that's okay. And here we have levels. So not necessarily, again, going from um, starting level to stronger level. And uh, to me, this is, um, a good way to do it because it's saying here's where we start and as we grow we're moving this way. Um, sometimes people have the the best category here the, like the expectation and you you go down. Um, I, I like the building up model but other people like it the other way it's it's a, a choice. Okay so um, let's look at um, the um, organization here. Rarely presents ideas in a logical sequence. Occasionally presents, usually always. I feel like this might be a little bit 
better. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant to use always because uh, do we really want to um, expect perfection? I, I mean, this presentation is not perf perfect. I don't always present my ideas in a logical sequence. So maybe we want to be well, change that to mostly. But I think that that's a little bit um, better. Um, looking at vocabulary, rarely uses appropriate vocabulary in proper language conven conventions. Occasionally uses appropriate vocabulary, usually consistently. I, I, I feel like that's um, a nice way to do it. And again, although there's a lot of criteria, um, I think uh, th this is a little more reliable than the first one, uh, looking down at visual aids. Few versus some versus several versus a variety of presentation methods. I think if you and I, um, even without norming, we would be able to be a little more consistent on knowing if it's a variety, maybe not, or several or some. It's just an idea to really think about those words that we're using. Uh, let's take one more example um, here and um, look again. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, criteria based on the expectations of the assignment. Some things I wanted to point out here um, is that although the 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 one of the important parts about a rubric is that the um, quality of assessment are described in what they that sh what we expect so we need something here um, you know student demonstrates full knowledge more than required with expl explanations and elaboration um, for, versus student is in a, as ease with the content in the presentation but fails to elaborate student is uncomfortable with the information is only able to answer you know, limited questions students do not have grasp of the information and cannot answer any questions about it um, also, th this one's a little bit interesting because this is clearly um, quality evaluation, but here there's some use of numbers. Only three of them present, only two of them present. None of these generic sessions are present. Um, I wanted to also point out that there is a big part here for comments so that the instructor can take notes here and maybe um, write it up in a paragraph form later or not. Um, Again, I'm not saying any of these are um, perfect assessments. Um, as, even if it were perfect for this context, it might not be perfect for your context. Um, I wanted to point out something else. Let's look at these, the scaling here. We have one, two, three, four, which seems like a fine choice because there are four levels. But now let's let's consider this. Say your st a student presents the information in a logical sequence, and they're at ease with the content. The analysis is is faithful but mechanical. Um, they they did th all three are present. Some only minimally. Right, the visuals are related to the text. So they they just did three all the way through. Um, if we were just going to use these as the way we grade it. Three out of four in every single category would give a grade of 75%. I really want you to think about that because do you think this description, if you were in this area, is a C, right? A 75% is a C in a lot of grading criteria, if it's not a C in yours, but just think about what it would be. You, We don't want to have everyone be perfect in everything in order to get an A. And maybe this is appropriate behavior, so maybe this should equal a B. So maybe it should be for 3.5 or something like that. So if they get that in every category, that's a nice strong B+. Plus. So maybe that's something else to think about, um, just not to label it straight up with the numbers. Okay, I hope this is helpful to you as you create your assessments and look forward to chatting with you more about this.